The biggest names in sports are all on IsraelSportsRadio.com. Yeah, this is Tamir. Hi, Tamir. This is Ari Lewis. You're live on Lewis Live on Israel Sports Radio. How are you doing out there? Yeah, hi, how are you? How are you? Doing great. And, of course, uh, joined by my co-host, uh, Raphael Geller. Go ahead, uh, Raphael. Hey, Tamir. How are you doing? Hey, Raphael. Ma kore. Uh, I call it ma kore. Uh, okay. Bon, bon, get, not mila busha. And for everyone out there who does not know what that means, that just means disgrace. And that is I'm talking about Israel's national team effort last night. Uh, a really hyped game. You know, the media gave out 6,000 free tickets to uh, kids in the army and kids, I think, from the south and Sterot and Be'er Sheva and all those cities. And what does our Israel national team do? Uh, to, not a full Ramat Gan stadium, but, you know, for, for Israel, 20,000 is a lot. We get embarrassed, embarrassed. Uh, Tamir, let's start with the Russia game and then move back to Friday night's game. Uh, I mean, what do we do here? What, what is next? You know, we fired Fernandez because he couldn't get it together. We bring in uh, Gutman, who, who, you know, has a very strong reputation in Israel, but obviously not really internationally. Uh, a lot of people, I don't know, the, you know, I don't know if you watched the game. I don't know how you watched the game in America, but the media here was bashing this team. Uh, making jokes in the second half about, you know, let's prepare for Euro 2016, it's over, blah, 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 and I'm not going to, and we have no defense. Uh, so kind of help us break down this game, please. Okay, so uh, first of all, you know, it's tough for me to, uh, I mean, I'm going to be very critical. It's uh, mm-hmm. tough for me. The two assistant coaches are my teammates, uh, well. former teammates, but uh, still it's, uh, it was, uh, as you said, Busha. And funny enough, I got two text messages right after saying Busha, exactly the word that you used. <laughs> um, I'm here kind of a Monday, night, Monday morning quarterback, but uh, <laughs> I'll give you my professional analysis of, uh, of the game. I was disappointed like uh, uh, all of you. And if I had to break it down to be a little bit more practical, we have a few core programs in the, on the national team. Uh, first of all, is in defense, as you said, the two central defenders are not coordinated. They're not playing well together. We have a more fundamental issue in the back is that in the system that we play, the right and left fullback got to be very dominant. And all over the world, Manchester United and Barcelona and these kind of teams, the two fullbacks creating a lot of the offense. Our fullbacks are not a factor offensively. And when they're not a factor offensively, there's almost no chance to create uh, a lot of scoring chances. So that's a huge issue. Another big problem with the Israeli national team is that half of the teams, uh, half of the players are very talented and they play abroad. The problem is that they uh, didn't make it to the starting lineup. Right. So you have half of the national team, they don't really play soccer. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's true. a huge issue. And it's uh, Ben Chaim. From yesterday, for example, Ben Chaim, Almog Cohen, Ben Ayun, Shechter, Ben Basat, Ben Sahar, none of them is playing on their team, a very limited role. Right. You cannot play like that without having a playing experience. Mentally, we totally broke down after the two uh, goals. Uh, speaking about the specific game with Russia, um, there were too many changes in the lineup. Half of the team was new <laughs> compared to the Friday game. Right. You cannot change half of the team. Um, being a little bit more tactical, um, I'll make one comment that is more really soccer-related, uh, is the change of system. And I don't know if our listeners really familiar with the system of play, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, the traditional play of Gutman in a lot of the teams is 4-4-2. 4-4-2 means four defenders, four midfielders, and two forwards. And that's what Gutman is playing for years. Against Russia, he played a very defensive system. You cannot play a defensive system at home. So what he did, he played only with one forward. It doesn't mean that it's defense, uh, defensive, but if you play with one forward, the second player right behind got to be a very offensive-minded player, okay? like a Benayun type. And he played with a guy named Radin, who is not this type of player. So Schechter by himself cannot do anything. So offensively, we didn't create anything because we played a very defensive game at home. That's a problem. And the last thing is um, I don't think Gutman expected such a strong start from Russia. In Russia, it's not just the score, the two goals. 
they pressured right away. Usually teams playing away game more, kind of holding back, and Russia came really strong. They pressure Israel in their half of the field. Gutman was not prepared for that. So that's my professional analysis of that game yesterday. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. I mean, I remember looking at the lineup and, you know, Ben Ayun Zin, uh, Hamed is out. It was just nuts. I mean, I don't really understand what's going on. I think, you know, from reading, uh, you know, the papers, Mariv and Yediot, you know, Gutman was saying he wants to make, you know, a change because he was disappointed with Friday night's match. I, you know, I'm not sure if that's way the best way, excuse me, the best way to do it. And you made a point that I want to ask you a very specific question. You said a lot of these guys are not playing, but if you look at all the guys, uh, Tamir, who have been playing in Europe uh, consistently, it's uh, Hamed, you know, who plays with Dudu Awad. So I don't know, why don't you put a guy who has scored goals against Real Madrid and Barcelona before, a guy who's getting playing experience, and a guy who, if you ask Spanish fans or Spanish analysts, they, they say he has a lot of upside, where you put in guys like Ben Sao, who can't even play in the second league in Germany. Uh, ben Ayuni, you know, is making the transition to West Ham. And, uh, Schechter hasn't played for Swansea. I, I don't, you know, is, please, I, I mean, I'm not a soccer analyst genius. I didn't play the game like you, but is there, is there a good reason... That one of the only you know forwards, guys who can score goals, is not did not play at all last night. Yes, I can tell you the logic behind it. Okay, uh, please. And I tell you why I disagree with the, his decision. The okay. main decision of doing it was the move from a four-four-two into four-five-one. As I said, four-five-one right. means four defenders, five midfielders, one forward. So he had to take one of the two forwards out. Okay. Either Schechter or Hamed. He decided to go with Schechter because Schechter is a creator. He's a creative forward. Hamed is only a goal scorer. And if you play only with one forward, you want somebody that's a bit more creative. Okay? That's why he chose Schechter. The mistake was to start with Ruddy. Instead of two forwards, as he always play, is to take one forward and play with a relatively limited offensive midfielder. That was the mistake, but the logic behind it is that he wanted to play with one forward. That's why he took Hamed out. The big issue here is second half. Second half, he put two forwards in. Okay? That was Ben Bassat and Ben Saha. Ben Bassat playing on and off, Ben Saha doesn't play for Hertha Berlin. Okay? That's the issue that you bring up that I don't understand. Right. Why Hamed was not uh, one of the two? Yeah, exactly. Okay? So the second half substitute that's when I don't understand. And if I had to guess, maybe there's some things that we don't know. Right. Uh, injury. Right. Uh, maybe some social or discipline problem. Maybe an attitude problem. We don't know that. But if it was a professional decision, big mistake. And I totally agree with you. Cannot tell you. It's. It's. Uh, I don't understand why it didn't happen in the second half. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, one another thing I'm hoping you can help us because it's always good. You know, it's, it's you can always have people like us who never played the game, you know, follow very closely. And, and we say we're analysts because, you know, that's what we do. That's our job. But someone who plays the game has a way better understanding. I, I, this is the thing when I was watching the game, Tamir, yesterday, I said, I can't wait to ask this to Tamir. What was Ben Ayun doing when he kept doing what we would call in basketball a pump fake? When he kept, you know, doing that thing where you thought he was going to shoot it, but then he turned it. I mean, I know that for, for the one... Uh, where the first one, the one that he claims he got fouled in the, in the box, I think he did too, whatever, he did it because he's more comfortable with that foot. But don't you think he should have just kicked it the first time? Or tactically, you know, mechanically, do you agree with what he did? This, you, I, I hope you know, do you, you know what I'm talking about, the play I'm talking about? Absolutely. Right. There were two major plan, uh, plays. With uh, Schechter. He did. First one when he claimed for a penalty kick and his, his shot wasn't uh, strong enough. The second one was on the left wing second half when he did it twice. Um, again, the, this is the style that Ben Ayun plays for years. The difference here, going back to the fact that he's not playing anywhere, okay, only now he's been signed by West Ham. For months he did not play. He did not do any preseason training. Right. He is not physically fit to perform the way he usually performs. This kind of moves, that's what made him an amazing player. He's an amazing dribbler. But when you're not in the good shape and you're not doing fast enough and Russia is so strong and fast, you're not going to be able to succeed. So he, that's what he does best, but he shouldn't have done it 
uh, yesterday because he's not physically fit in my eyes. Right. So I it mean, was a mistake. And, you know, the thing, I don't know, we, you know, it's the next day now. It's a very disappointing score. But let's look at it being, you know, as you said, Monday afternoon quarterback. Let's look at it the next day. We had some chances. I mean, that play with him and Schechter, the one we're talking about, that was a really uh, good play. I mean, there was a few chances there. They started to play very well. Uh, towards the first of the half and the first half and you kind of wish that that first half didn't end because then they didn't bring the same kind of intensity in the second half uh okay but this is the situation two games in one point uh you know the goal differential four nil obviously not good uh russia of course is capello their goal but you know they don't they want to be in first place they don't want to go into the qualifiers with second place uh, Portugal, on the other hand, Tomeu, didn't play that well against Luxembourg. I don't know if that's because they, you know, they knew they were going to kill them and they weren't playing that hard. Uh, I really don't know. I, I, I didn't get to watch it. But still, this is a very – you look at it – I mean, there's no powerhouse team. I know Portugal, you could say, is a powerhouse team, but they've struggled uh, since Deco and, and uh, Figo have left the Portuguese national team. They haven't been the same, in my opinion. Um, and, and a team like Luxembourg, where the population is pretty much world bankers, let's be honest, and Northern Ireland, uh, do you, I mean, I don't know, this is, is, do we still have a chance to, to let's, let's not even say to make it, but to make things interesting, or is it over to make, is this campaign over after the first week? Uh, okay, first, let's go before the two games. I think always Israelis, uh, you know, we have high expectations from uh-huh, the, right. from our team. We have a, we have a very good team. Doesn't she? Didn't show, but uh, Russia and, and Portugal is they are a different level than Israel. Let's uh, put it on the table. Right. But in the past uh, decade or even couple decades, we are narrowing the gap. So we're always very close to it. So the fact that we're so behind now, it's very disappointing. Um, theoretically speaking, we still have a chance, no doubt about that. Um, we need to beat the weak teams. No, we got to get Luxembourg six points next month. That's not even a question. We got to beat uh, Azerbaijan at home. Um, Ireland, I mean, Northern Ireland, we, we got we to take at least four points from them. And we need one, Portugal a good game at home, and we need to get some points away against the two big teams. So, but Theoretically speaking, it's possible. My concern is mentally. And I, yesterday they broke down mentally. I don't know if Gutman will be able to, to bring them up uh, and get them to believe that, it's still a, that there is still a small chance. If I had to bet, of course, we will not make it. Um, but are we going to be third place? Most likely. Yeah, I do believe that we'll be a third place. We'll make it semi-competitive because we are much, much better than the rest of the teams below us. Uh, there's no comparison. So we'll bounce back to become somewhat a factor in the group. Are we able to go to Brazil? Uh, it's going to be a miracle. Right. <laughs> and uh, it's just sad, though, because I, I can't tell you how many times this has happened. You know, I remember, uh, what was it, 2000? And 11, uh, you know, watch, getting so excited to, to watch Israel play Greece and, and to, you know, let's make the Euro, let's make the Euro. And there's always disappointment. But now it's come to the, you know, I'm starting to wonder to me, is it more Israeli fans being naive and expecting, you kind of said this earlier, but is this Israeli fans expecting too much from a team that's really simply point blank, not talented enough to make a Euro or a World Cup right now, or in the last five, six, seven, eight years? Or is it that, I mean, what's going on here? What's going to fix this? You know, they may, I want to get your thoughts also. This is part two of the question. Last night, uh, you know, all the big uh, pundits in Israel were saying, it, we need to stop firing coaches after we don't make a campaign. We need to give them time to build the program. Uh, we need to give them, you know, four, five, six years. We need to see what they can do with a long period because, Every time you fire a coach every three, four years, you know, you have to restart. You have to build your own team. Uh, I, don't, I just asked you 20 questions, but please answer them as much as you can. <laughs> if, I'll start with the, with, with the last one. I, I think four years is a good, uh, good time for a coach. If you cannot uh, get a team together in four years, um, I, I don't see a reason why not uh, giving somebody else a chance. 
Uh, from all the coaches that coach in the past few years, I think Gutman is a person you need to give him more time. The guy proved himself on the international level, not coaching international teams, but what he did with Apoel Tel Aviv in the European uh, Cup is, is absolutely amazing. Is uh, I think I really think is a is a very good coach. I would give him at least four years, and as you said, maybe even more. Um, let, it, let give him a chance to go into the Euro, the next Euro, and maybe even the the following World Cup. So that's a good point that um, that you bring up. In terms of uh, the fans, we definitely have high expectations. And by the way, not just in soccer. <laughs> we that's uh, our nature. We we even the Olympics. Right. Uh, we are so disappointed that we didn't get anything, but, you know, we're a small country, no resources. It's Realistically speaking, we, we don't have that many chances. So getting an Olympic medal, it's, it's a great achievement, but if not, we were so disappointed. And, yes, our expectations are much higher. There's another issue, I don't know if you read about the Croatia, the previous Croatian coach, what he said yesterday about the, the Israeli fans. Uh, that day after a few minutes, if things don't work out, they just start pressuring and, and uh, whistling and being right. and showing the dissatisfaction with the with the team. That's soccer player needs to be strong mentally, but this is affecting Israelis at home. We need more support. Right. And I think uh, yesterday wasn't bad, but usually we are too demanding. And as a player, I know when your own fans are against you, it's really tough to play. To deal with Mm -hmm. Fans of the other team is a piece of cake. It's mm -hmm. actually <laughs> giving you a challenge. But when your own fans going against you, really, really tough uh, to play. So my, I, I wish the Israeli fans will have a little bit more tolerance, be a little bit more supportive, because once they support the team, they are amazing. They are noisy. And right. they, are, they, they give a lot of energy. So that's uh, my comment in terms of the, of the, of the fans. Long term, what to do with the Israeli soccer? It's got to start with youth. And mm -hmm. here, living in America, and I'm uh, being part of the youth soccer movement in America, it is absolutely amazing to see how the Americans investing in in youth. And it shows. It shows almost the whole national team coming from youth soccer here in America, not uh, uh, foreigners that uh, been naturalized. Right. They actually grew up play, playing here. They came from college, a lot of, the, a lot of them. So Israel got to get the example from the U.S. and, and uh, invest in youth. Uh, and slowly it's going to show and, and uh, it's going to affect the level of the Israeli national team as well. Right, and uh, the thing I want to follow up with what you said, my thing, my biggest problem, you know, maybe not even the fans, but the media, Tommy, is so negative here. It's so, I mean... I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a it's it's being Israeli, and I know that's what it's like. You know, that's the culture here, and that's what we're always going to be like. But when you have, you know, the big guys, the pundits that everyone knows, saying stuff in, in the middle of the game, you know, uh, you know, after they scored the third goal, they said something like, "Okay, this game's over. Just watch it now to watch Russia play great football." That's one comment. Another comment was, uh, "Let's let's pack our bags for Euro 2016." Uh, you know, I mean, you know, it's not. If I'm, if I'm the players, where's the support from the media? I mean, I understand 4-0 was not the score expected, but to just bash the team, uh, it shows no loyalty, and that's not what our country's about. I mean, our country's all about loyalty. Um, I don't know, but we, got, we have one more question to go because we've got to run. And you know what's really funny uh, to me? I think you'll, you'll get a laugh from this. Our next guest, who's actually our, our European soccer uh, analyst from Fox Soccer, is Mark Serber. And we understand that he used to be a coach in your academy. Yes. Oh, <laughs> say hi to him. Yeah, absolutely. He used to work with us. Terrific guy. He knows the game. A good choice for, for a guest. Absolutely. Yeah, he's, and he's a great guy. Definitely know him personally. We met a couple times. Uh, that's terrific that he's on your show. It's yeah, he's, for me. he's up next. I want to, you know, a for, former Apollo Tel Aviv player, uh, how excited are you to, to watch this Atletico Madrid game? I mean, the champions of the Europa League, uh, a lot, a lot of talent, obviously, uh, coming to, to, you know, to Israel, to Bloomfield. Uh, uh, I'm ex more excited about going to that game. I didn't get to go to the Russia game because we had a show. Uh, but I'm more excited about going to that game because I am going to go to that game than, than watching any Israel team just because... 
they're such a great team. I mean, I, I, they're a really, really talented team. Yeah, they're not Barcelona Real, but they're still maybe probably the best team that's come to Israel uh, in a long time. Uh, are, are you worried, I mean, for the score of this game? Do you think this is going to be another 4-0? Or do you see a Poel staying strong and, and making this respectable? Or, or Chas Vichelida pulling off a miracle? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I share your, your attitude. I'm very excited about this game. Uh, I spoke to my brother 10 minutes ago. He bought all the team tickets for the whole family. I wish I could be there to go. Definitely uh, do that. It's an amazing opportunity for Apoel Tel Aviv. In the past, we beat teams that are better than Atletico Madrid. Now, if you remember Chelsea, right. AC Milan. Right. Uh, so it is possible. Mentally, we are there. We believe in ourselves. We, I say ourselves because it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> still your a blood. Big, big part of the system there. But you are. Um, I, I always try to be optimistic about uh, Apoel. I think we have a good enough team. This is a huge challenge, though. We're talking about the European champions. Right. Um, Who beat Chelsea level. as well. No doubt they have Falcao, oh, no. which will be an amazing... It's uh, going to be very uh, tough to cover. To he is him. an amazing, amazing uh, player. Forwards, consider one of the best forwards in, in the world today. Right. So it's going to be a, a big challenge. Um, I have some concerns, but i got to be optimistic and, and go with a uh, good score for a boy, either a tie or a win. <laughs> wow. uh, it will definitely make me happy. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... Uh... I'm really excited. I even, you know, forgot that Kriyat Shimon is in it because their their group's kind of boring, from what I remember. It's still a lot of talented teams, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be great. And, and Tomil, we'd love to have you on after that game too. Uh, I think that's going to be right after Los Angeles in between Yom Kippur. We'd love to have you on to help break that down for us. How's that sound? Oh, I would uh, be happy to to be there and talk about the game. Absolutely. Okay, great. All right, Tamir, thank you for being on Lewis Live and Israel Sports Radio, and we will speak with you again soon. Sounds good. Have a good day, guys. Thank All you, right. Tomo. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.